<laughs> whether it's true or not, it is it's such a beautiful story. It's like it's like the resurrection of Christ, Lizzo fat shaming. <laughs> That's how good of a story it is. <laughs> Welcome to St. Albans Central, everybody, and I don't know if an episode could write itself better. We are talking about Lizzo today. How can you not? It is one of the most succulent things in the world. (laughs) Truth hurts. She's 100% a bitch, dude. (laughs) Hundred oh percent, like God. the uh, like the the beauty and the irony of Lizzo, who's just like love yourself, accept yourself, body positivity. She's fat shaming all of her oompa loompas on the dance floor, dude. What a like! Can we take a moment and just recognize how how beautiful this is? Like it is, it is a sweet nectar of the gods, and the irony of Lizzo getting like just going down in flames, dude. The headlines are she is getting like she's getting canceled for fat shaming. Absolutely, this is South Park. Like like (laughs) whether it's true or not, it is. It's such a beautiful story. It's like. It's like the resurrection of Christ, Lizzo fat shaming. <laughs> That's how good of a story it is. Um, uh, let's get into it a little bit, dude. The allegations of Lizzo, it, it's pretty unbelievable to me. Um, there was she was uh, she was fat shaming or bu- is that bullying? Like, can you sue because someone called you fat? I guess. I, I mean. She just made him do like a 12 hour rehearsal. Like she made him, you know, take a long Yeah, I know, long dude. And, and like none of those dancers have probably gone that long without eating, you know? <laughs> oh my god. It's fine, dude. We're okay. We're okay. <laughs> We're okay, We're okay I hope dude. I'm scared. <laughs> I haven't gone that long without eating. Okay, yeah, re- can you read some of the allegations? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. For, for yeah. Lizzie. Of course. Three of Lizzo's former dancers have accused a singer of sexual harassment and creating a hostile work environment on Tuesday. So one is she allegedly pressured one of them to touch a nude performer at an Amsterdam club. You're in Amsterdam. Like, touching a nude performer is tame over there, dude. Yeah, it's... And here's just more comment on that. Uh... They began inviting cast members to take turns touching nude performers who were catching dildos launched from their vaginas. Dude, those must have been some slippery dildos, dude. Like, <laughs> for that to have like a trajectory, you they would have to be slip in those. Oh yeah, just like <laughs> you, and you'd have to be nice and t- you'd have to be <laughs> up on your kegels to get I'm- those things in the air, you know. <laughs> But the the one that was accused so was Miss Davis, Ari Davis. Uh, Lizzo turned her attention to Miss Davis and began pressuring her to touch the breasts of one of the nude women. Davis declined. My favorite part says, after which Lizzo allegedly began chanting with everyone else, and the chanting grew louder and more strident. So everyone in the club is going, "Do it, do <laughs> it, do those, do those, dude!" Like these allegations are wild, and like I don't think the, I think the only person that could have like uh, bad allegations against them that would be like sweeter is Michelle Obama. If it came out that oh Michelle Obama was like you know, laundering money or just like harvesting children's organs or something like that's a better story. But Lizzo, um, you know, 
RIP to the queen. You know, that's, it's crazy. And it's, it's just so funny, dude. Because I remember I watched her on, on NPR Tiny Show. And I'm a fan. I think she's incredibly talented. Yeah. She was just like, if I can love myself, you can love yourself. And now she's just calling people fat bitches, dude. Like, uh, it's unbelievable. It is, it is the perfect story. Like, these allegations, sexual harassment, and th- this is the thing, dude. Like, as crazy as these allegations are, I'm, I'm probably on Lizzo's side. This oh. is like... Yeah. This just sounds like a money grab. What it sounds like is someone, you know, Lizzo could have had a bad day or whatever, and they weren't treated great, and they met some lawyer at a bar. It was just like, hey, you could get some money. Because best case scenario, they just settle, and these dancers get some money. That's probably what's going to happen. But, like, all all these allegations are absolute. they're so stupid. Oh, they're so stupid. Like now there's some validity. It's like if your boss is like pressuring you to do stuff like that, I can see maybe a little bit of it. And and it could be Lizzo's fault, too, because she's hanging out with these people all the time. So it's like it can be she could be like, oh, these are just my friends and my homies. And then she can be like, hey, Tamara. Slap that girl's titty, you know? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, someone's like, I don't want to do this. And so there is like, it can maybe get a little weird with a power dynamic because even though they're super friendly, they spend time together, they're like family, probably. Yeah. There is like a boss employee dynamic. I think that's what the crux of this is, is that she's clearly just going out and wanting to hang and party yes. with these girls yeah. and like go to the wild clubs. Mm-hmm. Cause you're Lizzo. You can go anywhere. Absolutely. Get dude. into any club in Absolutely. America. And, well, the thing is like, I remember like, cause somebody, yeah, she got accused of, it was it fat shaming or what was it called? So it was both fat shaming and racial. Of course, the it's thing, the whole dynamic. The thing with fat shaming, like the only thing I could believe is if Lizzo's like, "Hey," but that was I, made by her touring company employees, not even her technically. Oh, okay. is what it's saying. So, well, maybe the maybe Lizzo's touring company is just like, "Hey, Lizzo has to be the fattest whale on stage." <laughs> so, uh, uh, Cassandra, you're catching up to her. We need you to eat some celery. You know. <laughs> Like, <laughs> like, like, but and if I remember correctly, like in that, it wasn't clear. Like yeah, the, the, the challenge with a lot of this stuff is when you, when, when people experience abuse or trauma or something that hurts their feelings, sometimes that abuse, trauma and hurt feelings is real. And sometimes it's perceived. So mm. it's not actually real. Um, and it sounds like a lot of this is people's feelings just got hurt. And because she's Lizzo, they can sue for a bunch of money. You know, it's, it seems crazy to me that you can sue because someone wasn't nice. Yeah. You know, and granted, it's like, there's, there's definitely toxic work environments where you should sue like if if your boss is like trying to finger you (laughs) you should sue him and he should go to jail yeah but just because your boss who is the the body positivity queen made you not feel nice Made you catch a banana from yeah, a dude, from, Amsterdam. Yeah, uh, made <laughs> you catch a, a banana from a vagina or whatever. <laughs> it's just I'm on Lizzo's side. This seems I'm pro Lizzo as well. This seems so silly and so stupid. It just seems like a cash grab. Um, but here's the crazy thing, dude. Um, so, um, the the tough thing about being somebody like Lizzo is. Her whole image is body positivity, a positive message, everything's good, everything's great. And when you're that type of person, you're going to be under like a, like a ton of scrutiny 
And like the spotlight's always going to be on you. Like even if she acts like indifferent to something, people are going to be like, oh my gosh, she was mean. But um, mm. some of the data that came out, uh, I think since it happened, she's lost 220,000 like followers. I didn't say pounds. No, I was just like, she, <laughs> what, did she look the same? <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, it, it's, uh, yeah, no, so. Uh, Lizzo's lost 220,000 followers. Um, her sales Dang. and streams have like stopped or at least significantly been depleted. Dude, she just was in the Barbie movie. Yeah. Like, so it's like, it's one of those things, dude. Cash. It's like, it's one of those things where if you're this type of person, like, you know, you. And, you know, stories come out that you're, you might be somebody different. You might be somebody, somebody different. This seems like a bunch of horse shit, but because she is Lizzo and it goes contrary to who, who she is in the spotlight, it's like hurting her oh, yeah. career. Yeah. Now, I mean, I like to think that she'll bounce back from it, literally. Huh? Come on, dude. It writes itself. It writes itself. Um, oh God. I think I would think she would bounce back from it, but um, but who knows, man? And it, this is the, this is the crazy thing too. It's like the people who on the internet or in front of cameras or like who are the nicest. Those people, I'm always the most suspect of because I'm like, you got something like Ellen. Ellen was a perfect example. She was just like. You know, dancing with with like moms, you know, Jared handing out Subway. handing out Tupperware, just like yay, everything's great. Giving checks to autistic children, like she she just like loved being so oh, generous. Yeah. And then it, it like comes out later that she's like she's a mo- she's a beast, dude. She's a <laughs> demon from from the the armpits of Lizzo, huh? <laughs> oh um, so it's like. It's interesting, man. Like, if you're, and I don't know if this is like in the mainstream spotlight, and you go contrary to what it is, like you, but you got to be careful, dude. Like, that's why it's like, that's why I am kind of the way I am. I don't think my Saint Alban persona is. It's like me amplified by ten percent. Like, I don't think anybody is surprised. Like, you're not surprised. Fred or like other friends, if they see me say something, nobody's just like, who's fucking, what's Trevor doing, yeah. dude? This is like who I am for the most part. It's just me on the entire time. He's the always so on. positive, so body positive to everybody. Yeah, dude, dude. Oh, that would be the day, dude. If you start hearing me talk about body positivity and just like love yourself and accept yourself, I murdered my wife. I, you know, I did something that I never want you to get a, a, a whiff of, you know? But that's the thing, man. Like, people turn on you. And it's like, when you're, like, in the spotlight and you're, you're like, supported by, like, the legacy medias of, of like, the music industry. Because, like, a lot of these executives, they're, they love certain people. But as soon as you stop making them money, they will cut you off so fast. Do you think it's like they're in a way, I don't want to say groomed into that, but like if you're a celebrity, you, everyone just wants a piece of you and it's like always trying to, you know, be your best buddy and turn a trick on you. But at the end of the day, it's like, you have to learn how, like who your real friends are and you have to be like mean to everybody else and be like, yeah. push them away. So I wonder if like people like Lizzo, it's like, did she get, you know, broken by the industry? And like, maybe she was a nice maybe. person. And now I, she's I just don't like, know. I mean, honestly, like from the stories, it's the the, the best explanation explanation of it is it's Lizzo, her company, yeah, too. She was like with her friends and just like busting their balls. Yeah. Oh, come on, touch touch the banana, you pussy. Like I would say the same thing to you. Yeah. If we were somewhere, like, and I do it, and you willingly, would, I would press. <laughs> yeah, you you don't even have to do it. You'd be like, you'd be grabbing all the bananas, you know. A good chant gets me to do anything. But it's just like that's the thing. It's like if you're not super, that and that's the thing. What I don't understand. It's like, don't go. Like I, just, I don't understand that whole thing. Like I guess they were like pressured. I guess I to mean to go. 
because it because it, honestly and like it could have just been the company pressuring and then they well, already a felt social pressure of like if i don't go then yes. she's gonna think i'm like a loser well because and... i think from what from what i've read it's like like it's already hard enough to be a dancer sure somewhere and it's like even harder to be a plus size dancer because lizzo only hires people that don't make her look so big <laughs> oh my god why was that the meanest thing i don't know thing? <laughs> i don't know it just it's like an optical illusion up there on stage. oh my gosh dude Woo. oh it's so funny wow all right <laughs> One more. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's it is a um, I don't know. It, it, it yeah, I think it's one of those things that just I think it's super silly. Yeah, I just don't buy it. I just I don't know. She I, might have had like she might have been a little like stern with somebody, but to come on to say Lizzo was fat shaming I don't somebody. Buy, see, that's the that's thing that is insane. bothering me about the internet is that they're saying Lizzo was fat shaming. When yeah. you read any of those articles, it says it was her touring yes. employee. Because yes. I don't, I can't even understand what the story is. But it was something about they have uh, downtime pay. So like when they're not on tour, they should still get paid. And mm-hmm. I guess a couple of them wanted fifty percent when they're not dancing of what they usually get. That's and the that's touring company said something about. Uh, it was like, you're only going to get 25. And they said, because something, something, only big, beautiful black women get 50% or something like that. Aren't they all black? I don't know. It was something about like, maybe one of them is like Latina or something. I have no idea. It said, here it goes. Uh, In one instance, the former dancers asked to be compensated for their downtime at a rate of 50% of their weekly pay, according to the suit. An accountant allegedly responded to the request by offering 25% and scolding them for being unacceptable and disrespectful. And then another quote, only the dance cast comprised of full-figured women of color were ever spoken to in this manner, the suit states. The suit states. That seems weird, dude. Like, those people... So they said (laughs) full-figured women of color. That those people, dude, they they're they're such penny pinchers. They're telling that to anybody. They're telling it to every single person, dude. It's crazy, man. I I feel. I mean, I don't know. I feel bad for Lizzo because it just it seems like worst case scenario, Lizzo just had like a bad day, yeah, and like might have been a little short with people or um because sometimes like it's your show. At the end of the day, and sometimes you you have to like push people, or you have to like, hey, get your shit together, you know? Yeah. And it's just like when it when it goes against your persona so much, people have a hard time. But I I feel I feel bad for her, man. Especially if you're she's losing a bunch of followers, and it's like her sales, her album sales are going down, her streams are going down. She'll bounce back. She'll come back. We all know she'll <laughs> bounce back. But that's the thing, dude. It's like. The bigger you get, and we're talking about from a, you know, God, uh, uh, an influence <laughs> standpoint, not a weight standpoint. Um, I don't think Lizzo's big enough, dude. She could get bigger. <laughs> she should really commit to the role and like try to get on that, like my thousand pound life or something like that, dude, and perform, revitalize that show a little bit. <laughs> no, like the, the bigger you get as an artist, like you have to be so careful who is in your circles. Like my, one of my biggest philosophies with St. Alban is whoever's playing with me or working with me, they have to be able to hang with me. Cause I'm, I say inappropriate things. I say off color jokes. I'll probably make fun of you. I do all of these things. But like, if you can't like hang with that, it's like, yeah, it's just like you're probably not the right person to work with me. So you have to be so careful with who you're selecting, and because if they're just like, just like super uptight people who are always like looking for something, I'm like, well, if you would have hired some like full figured men, on your, I, that's probably my that problem. I don't hire full figured <laughs> men, dude. 
Um, I only hire beta males. <laughs> that's like all. That's all I. Yep. That's all I. But they're loyal. Out. They hey dude, <laughs> betas are beta males are so loyal because they're such bitches, dude. They don't have any <laughs> friends, and you you know you give them a little you give them a little cookie, and they they'll never leave you. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it, how it shakes out. She'll, I, I do think she'll be fine. I think this will blow over, but, um, yeah, that's, it's gotta be so weird to be in like the, she's like in the club, you know, like the in club of celebrity or whatever. Like you just wonder how many people just like turn their backs. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Just just for allegations. It'd be a curse. Every day of your life is like playing, you know, like a mystery to solve game of like, Mm -hmm. who is actually to trust? Who should I not trust? I mean, I I don't know. I would not be able to have the pressure of like being that ultra famous where like everywhere you go, people just want to like jerk you off like oh let me get something for you let yeah, me help yeah. you let me you know yeah. oh, let me do that for you like and it's just like it could just be a day where you're just like i don't want to be around people and like hey man get a photo like dude leave me alone like dude that guy's a dick yeah you know? well yeah that's what happens yeah that's why dude i'm telling you internet and <laughs> internet fame is the best type of fame there is like like i'm thinking like mr beast is the biggest youtuber in the world and like if would you notice him at a walmart Maybe, but it take, it take a second though. Yeah, but like yeah. he could go to probably a bunch of if there's a bunch of old people somewhere, no like chance. the hills of Alabama or Kentucky, he could walk walk through their people be like that's a nice white man, you know. <laughs> they wouldn't say anything, but like <laughs> you can't be Brad Pitt can't go anywhere. No, Lord no. It's just like everybody knows who he is is all up in your business. Do you think Michael Jordan still has that? Do you think yeah, he still? It's Michael pretty, Jordan, right? Dude. I know, but he's getting old. Like you it's know, Michael Jordan, the greatest athlete of all time. I think he could he could hide though in, in a crowd, maybe in a shadow. <laughs> <laughs> maybe in Lizzo's shadow. Dude. Oh my god! Damn. <laughs> um, oh. But yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it it just sounds scary. Like the internet fame just see just seems to be more more ideal, dude. You could have like a small, you could have like a million, like Andrew Schultz, dude. He's got two, three million subscribers. So many people don't know who he is, but oh, he's like, yeah. he's selling out theaters. He's doing all this stuff. Like that's the dream level of fame. Like anything bigger than that, it's just like ugh. There's people I'll stumble upon. I'm like TikTok and I'm like, you have, how do you have two or 3 million followers? And like, mm-hmm. I've never seen these people in my life. Mm-hmm. Like they're in such a small corner of the internet. They have their little crew, you know, it's yeah. like, so they could walk around anywhere. Like, yeah, no one's going to know who this, whatever, like person that, you know, sh- personal chef or whatever, or like, you know, concrete yep. driveway, yep. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah. There's so many, like, it's so weird. Like TikTok, there's just so, so many ways to get famous. There's so many ways to get famous. And, so, and in some ways it's like, does it even mean anything sometimes? Cause yeah. it's like, you could have a few million followers on TikTok. I mean, I guess you're probably making some money if you under, if you know how to work it, but, um, well, that's the thing. It kind of brings up um, because Billie Eilish did the song. What was I made for? I think for Barbie. I haven't. Did you see Barbie? Oh, twice. Okay, you liked it. I did actually. Yeah, I haven't seen it yeah, yet. It was good. Um, but with the way the internet is, I think Billie Eilish is the last superstar that will be new. I think. Billie Eilish is the last person because the internet scattered every single person. When mm. she came up and like Ocean Nines came up and an even bad guy, I think bad guy was like pre pandemic, right? Yeah. That was 2018 or something. I think 2020 is when it like accelerated social media and scattered everybody into their own algorithms. Uh, but prior to that, that's when bad guy came out and Billie Eilish was massive she's still a massive star i think she'll probably be the last legacy superstar that we'll see i don't think there's going to be anybody after her that comes from the mainstream like music machine Hmm. who will be as big 
or bigger than her. I think it's all downhill from there. Granted, you could still have like a big career, but like like the the the, the person I think who was closest was Olivia Rodrigo. Oh yeah. And she I mean she had that album, but I haven't heard anything. She's kind not really in, out a little bit. She's like, not in the public spotlight or anything, but like Billie Eilish is still very prominent, you know. Um but yeah, it's interesting how the internet just scattered every single thing and you're not going to have your you know, you're not going to have Coldplay anymore. You're not going to have Mumford and Sons anymore. You're not going to have uh Led Zeppelin, The Stones, uh, whoever, Beyonce. You're not going to have all these massive stars anymore because mm. of the internet. There will be people who are still massive stars. Like, like I remember watching that documentary, and this dude was selling out stadiums, and I had no idea who he was, and it was Travis Scott. Hmm. Never heard of him in my entire life. So, I, and I'm not saying that. Like you, I'm saying you can still sell out stadiums, but... And it has less to do with who Billie Eilish is. It has more to do with our attention has shifted so much to be so hyper-individual. We used to watch the same TV shows. We used to uh, watch the same movies and everything. But now, everybody might have Netflix. That's about it. Yeah. Like, nobody, people don't have 8 Max. They don't have Apple TV. So people are just watching their own stuff. Same with music now. Like Spotify, there's so I think there's what over forty thousand songs uploaded a day to there, Spotify. You can't keep up with it. There's no you can't way. keep up with it. But it's like I can find the artists that I like, and yeah. hopefully I can help them like have a career by streaming and supporting them. But I just don't see a world in which another. It's easy to choose non pop stars nowadays. Like yeah, I think about like when my parents were listening to music. It was like. <laughs> you had the radio stations, which grabbed most of their collections, you know, from record companies that were sending them, you know, LPs and whatnot. And it's like, maybe you get a local, localish group that would throw yep. their hat in the ring from time mm-hmm. to time. But nowadays it's like, I don't want to listen to radio. I'll just like stream something. They're like, actually, I'm going to go. I know Spotify has a list where you can like find songs that have never been listened to before. Mm-hmm. So you can literally just go to a playlist and be like, oh, no one's ever heard this music That's before. I and I will that. listen to it. Mm-hmm. So it's like, if you want to like go against the current, it's so easy nowadays. Whereas back then, you have to like find, you know, go to a store, find yeah. a record no one ever heard about, and put it. You know, it's just like you said, it's pop stars are slowly on the on the out. But yeah, yeah, I want, I yeah, I I wonder, and like we may have like a somebody slip through, but I just I really just don't see a world in which another pop star as big as someone like Billie Eilish or Beyonce or Jay-Z or whatever are gonna Jason Aldean Jason Aldean that's true (laughs) Jason Aldean oh yeah yeah I I was thinking of somebody else but now I know who Jason Aldean is (laughs) um (laughs) yeah I don't know I I could be wrong but it's it's kind of a bummer that we don't all participate in liking something but it's also great for people like like artists like myself, like I can find my few hundred, few thousand people who actually like what I'm doing and, you know, make a comfortable living with it. Yep. But, um, okay. Last thing I was talking about, have you listened to post Malone's new album? Ooh, not the whole thing. Just a uh, one or two of the songs. Dude, it's post Malone. I think is. He's probably, he's probably my favorite current pop star right now. His stuff just always sounds different. You know, he doesn't yeah. get caught up in like and granted like he, he there are the songs on the album that are like hey, these are like the commercial hits or whatever. But he keeps pushing and I really like what he's doing. Um he looks good now. He's like super thin. I was going to say he's he's cut. I don't know if kinda. he like stopped drinking or he just started doing meth, you know. Probably, he's yeah. looking good. Um, I think one of the things why I respect Post Malone so much, if you look at his song credits, it's usually like three people. Hmm. Any other pop star, like uh, Travis Scott put out his album. A bunch of the songs had like 12 people on it as songwriters. So like too many, it shows like Post is in the studio very much a part 
of each song um, and each project that he puts out. But I wish, I think my only critique of the album and post is like his vocal production. It's like all the same. And I wish post Malone would do like an analog album, which is like drums, bass, guitar, you know? Yeah. Cause like one of my favorite things he did was he did a um, Nirvana like tribute benefit. I think during the pandemic, it was like him, Travis Barker, and they covered a bunch of Nirvana oh, songs. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. And it was unbelievable. Yeah. It was unbelievable. There's no, I don't think there is a pop star as diverse as Post Malone is. Hmm. But I think if he did like an analog, just like rock album that wasn't so polished, it would be unbelievable. And I think this is like the time to do it. I think that is the next thing that's, I think like rock bands are going to start coming back a little more. Mm -hmm. Like just like four piece, five piece, just like no, not a ton of frill in it. You think so? I think so. I think like, I think maybe the younger like, generation, like they are getting into some of that now. And I think like the more emo rock and yeah. like, grunge rock is like kind of all that is kind of like mixing together now mm -hmm. and i think people want to see some bands but i i, I can know. see that but i i also just think the industry just shifted to artists because band hmm. managing bands is or at least a sound so i should say difficult. maybe not like bands as the gotcha, front gotcha, runner gotcha. but i think just that sound is going to be coming back um a little bit more raw but that's my hot take 2024 yeah yeah i think i it would be it would be so dope if post did some yeah. sort of it would rule like rock record or something like that. But, um, all right, that's it. I feel good. Lizzo, you got a supporter in me. Um, probably not under support, but you know, I got your back at any time. So, uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Um, that's all I got. <laughs> Ciao.